It's the Heat Serious XM. I'm Mina Say What. You're in Mina's house. Ella May is joining the Hello. house. Hello. How are you? Looking so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the hair. Thanks. I got a little hair color change. My hair used to be really dark. Now I'm kind of going a little bit lighter. So thank I you. I remember. That's yeah. why I said that. I like I like that on you. Thank you. Yeah, you're pretty. You could rock anything. Thanks. You got green hair, girl. No, I, you know what? <laughs> I don't think I could get away with green hair. No. I don't think so. Really? So we're I'm, never going to see you in like a pink wig or blue? Or... I'll try it. For Halloween, I had like a bright blonde. I was Storm. I was channeling my inner Halle Berry in like <laughs> a really bright, bright platinum blonde. And I actually wasn't mad at that. So I'm like, maybe I can experiment a little bit more. But I don't know about green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you, I love Ready, your EP. Thank you. I love it. Thank like, you. Any more like breakfast in bed. <laughs> You're throwing it all the way back. Girl, yeah. I've been yeah. there for a minute. And it's funny because we would play your song when you release Not Another Love Song. Mm -hmm. And I would be like, I'm waiting on LMA. I'm waiting on <laughs> LMA. I'm waiting on LMA. You have a way of really conveying things that we feel as women in a very like simplistic way yeah. mm -hmm. and you're talking about topics that people really don't talk about like to talk about having breakfast in bed <laughs> right I, I mean I I don't think has anybody ever written that kind of song you I'm know sure, I'm sure someone has yes I, yeah. <laughs> but I I can't think of any off the top of my head yeah. so I just love how you managed to take something really simple mm -hmm. and just make it into a song like Thank things you. that we feel but that we don't normally hear in the yeah. music I feel like for me, I'm, I'm, I've been saying this all day, literally, but I'm such a lover girl. And I think I feel like when we try and when I songwrite anyway, I can't speak for anyone else. But when I songwrite, I really just like to to explain what I'm feeling at the time. And um, it's just we all, as, as women, but even as men, we all go through the same thing. Everybody mm -hmm. at the end of the day just wants to be loved. Right. And I think um, no matter how you experience it, we obviously all experience it in different ways. Um, but we're all down like when it comes down to it we all just want to be loved. And I think we all relate to each other a lot more than we actually realize. And, and I love that. Yeah. So uh, your debut album was all kinds of platinum mm -hmm. and Grammy, you, you know, you want a Grammy and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. So now working into this sophomore album, you know, they always say like the sophomore hump or whatever, like people kind of struggle sometimes to put those songs together. Did you experience that? Uh, Yeah, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely, to be completely honest, I definitely had a, a, time period in the album process where I was like really overthinking and I'm like you know I had a really successful debut album so to come back um and every like you just said the sophomore curse like I was kind of scared I'll, I'll be honest but I think I, I sat down with Mustard and he really told me to just like get out of my head and, and nothing's different to this process than it was in my debut album process like just go in and make music and do what you love to do and um what comes out well I'm he was like I'm pretty sure you'll love it and and once I kind of took that into consideration and, and really stopped overthinking about things um it really it flowed naturally and I'm really really proud of this body of work and I I think I like, you know, I think everyone's going to love it as much as I do and my team do and just everyone who's already heard it. Um, and I'm just, yeah, I'm grateful to be back. It's, I know it's been a while. I know everyone's been wondering where have I been? Um, but I'm really grateful to be back. We'll get to that because you be pulling on Normani, girl. You know, Normani <laughs> will come out and then all of a sudden you don't hear from Normani. Then she mm -hmm. come out with a beggar like you be pulling Normani's. But we like it because it's like you give us a little bit. And then we're wanting more. Yeah, I think and I'm then you definitely, give us more. Sorry, I cut you off. I think I'm definitely a quality over quantity type of person and just in all aspects of my life, honestly. And uh, like I said, having such a successful debut album, I wanted to make sure that when I came back, it, I came back correct. I didn't want to I didn't want to give uh, anything that I wasn't super, super proud of or that I, I didn't think um, was a real reference representation of the the woman that I've become and the woman that I'm still becoming so I definitely I did have points where I was like oh, I just want to put something out um but it just needed to make the most sense and I think we finally got to that place and now with heart on my sleeve uh we're here I'm so happy you're here I literally be like I, I told you I'm like where's LMA I need <laughs> LMA I need you so don't f me up Again, we were having a conversation about how you managed to put things into words that, I, I, you know, it's unique in a way, the way yeah. you do it. So we all have that, like, that feeling of, like, you meet someone and you don't want to be let down. And it's like, but people let us down. You know, you want the person to be around, but they end up letting us down. I mean, where did that come from, that inspiration? Was that something that happened to you personally? Yeah, I think at the time, um, just where I was, I think, I've, you know, I've been let down before. 
And I think I, I definitely I have high expectations and I'm aware of that. Um, what so, sign are you? I'm a Scorpio. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all Scorpio women, what, boy. What are you? I'm a Taurus. So oh. we get a lot Wait, of really- so your birthday? Yeah, yeah. My birthday just passed. Just passed. Happy birthday. I love birthday. that. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, very, I'm very in tune with that stuff. So <laughs> Scorpio women, I'm always like besties with, right? But y'all some difficult women because some of my best friends are Scorpio women. I'd be like, girl, you doing a lot. Yeah, I can't even, I'm not even going to lie to you. We are. We are a lot. We are a lot. But I take pride in that, honestly. Like, <laughs> right. I- I'm a Scorpio. I'm very like stuck in my ways. I'm working on it. I'm definitely working on it, but I've been let down before and I know what it feels like. And I don't continuously want to be let down. I don't think anyone does. Um, but that's a risk you take in, in love and just in relationships and, um, you know, putting your, wearing your heart on your sleeve. And I really do. I know a lot of people probably think like, I don't seem like the type to wear my heart on my sleeve, but I really do. Um, I really, really do. And I think just with DFMU, it was just me explaining explaining like what we all go through and what we all feel and uh it just it's reminiscent of the 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 music that I grew up on like the harmonies and the backgrounds like it just felt really special to me um and where I was at in the in in that time in my life so yeah yeah I love the song Thank seriously you. even like the writing I'm like girl you did who did someone help you write that or was I, that I wrote that with Prince Charles girl who somebody the I write. writing yeah he's in, he's incredible but I've been writing with him for years like since my EP day so I think when we get in the studio and I worked a lot with him on on this album and he's on my debut album too but I love to write with people who I'm really really just comfortable with because I can I don't songwriting is a really like sacred process and I don't want to walk into a room and just tell somebody all of my business like right. it's, you know like I don't want to do that sometimes you have to in order to you know make the song but when there's someone that you feel comfortable enough with that you work really well with and write really well with and you can also open up about what's going on exactly I feel like you get that real emotion and the real story behind it because there's everything's out on the table um and Prince Charles and I have a great relationship and I think we've always been really good at um at telling a story yeah so you keep saying hard on my sleeve that's because that's the name of the album yes. so it's coming out this Friday yes um so you just said you know you wear your heart on, on your sleeve um but when did that title come to you when was it like this is it yeah I so I, I didn't have a title for a while. I had a different title and I was like, I liked it for a little while and then I didn't really like it. And then I told my team and they were like, mm, not really sure. And then I went through a breakup, literally. And um, a text message that I sent, I said, I was like, no, I, I, I wore my heart on my sleeve throughout this whole process. And I think it was, it was like two days later, I came back to the text and reread it because you Girl, know you like, can't do that <laughs> no I didn't I didn't I didn't write anything else but I <laughs> came back delete. to the text to read to just to reread it because I wanted to make sure I articulated myself right. properly um and I reread it and that line just kept sticking out to me for some reason like I was reading but like I was stuck on the heart of my sleeve part and I was like this is the name of my album yeah all of the songs that I were recording was during this process and and real in real time in my life and I was like I don't think there's anything that better describes the music than heart on my sleeve so when he hears this album on friday he gonna be like she wrote an album about me <laughs> this is ella may's lemonade <laughs> nah, no 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 it's not it's not um my album is is uh, like i said to you before i'm a lover i'm a lover girl yeah. so and i don't like to i don't like to bash anyone i like to appreciate things for exactly yes. what they they were and that's about it <laughs> right <laughs> so heart on my sleeve is coming out this friday you have lucky day on here lotto yes roddy rich yes. i love these collaborations Thank you. uh did you like say i want to collaborate with these people or this is just how it worked out um it's it definitely a mixture of both yeah I, I i knew i wanted roddy from like from when i went back into the studio and started recording i was like mustard i feel like it's just overdue with with the relationship that mustard has with him and the relationship that i have with mustard and um me being around roddy and just a, being a fan i'm i'm a i, I love to work with people who i am a, a big fan of and roddy i'm a fan of so um how came about really easily like i recorded the song and he wasn't in the studio with me but he was in the back room like we were in the same studio building mm -hmm. but not the same studio um and he killed his verse he did it so quickly um, he was really excited about the song and, and it's produced by Mustard again. So like, it just, it just makes so much sense. And it's really, it's a song about, it's like, you listen to the song and you hear it on Friday, it makes you want to dance and it makes you want to move, but it's actually like low key, a heartbreak anthem. 
um, but how you pick yourself up from that. So it's almost like an oxymoron in a way, like it's just a lot of different things going on, but it makes so much sense. So I'm really excited about that. With Lucky, I've been working with Lucky um, from my EP days also. Like I used to write with him all the time before he, well, he was making his own music, but before his rise and just to see his journey that he's on right now, um, coming off of winning a Grammy and just yeah. like, I just really feel like his voice is really important um, mm -hmm. in this like modern day contemporary R&B um, stage that we're in and it was really like a full circle moment for us to now have an actual collaboration even though we've written together um, so many times and with with Lars she's one she's she's one of my favorites right now like honestly I, I didn't have a female so I had I had Roddy and Lucky already um, and I had didn't say I had the song already and I was just like I feel like it needs a feature and if I had to pick a female I don't have any songs with a female rapper Wow, so other than one. other than when Nikki remix booed up, that's yeah. that's literally it. Um, so I was like, this just makes the most sense. And I, I'd met her during my album process. We were using the same studio. Um, so I just sent it over to her and she killed it. Like she did. I didn't even obviously that's a beautiful thing about music because I didn't tell her what I wanted her to say. I never like to do that. I like to for you to just go in and, and do what you want to do. And when she sent the verse back, I was like, this is everything I wanted her to say. And I didn't even have to say anything. And I just appreciate that so much about her artistry. And it's definitely what the girls want to hear. Right. I don't think, I think when you think about LMA and Lotto, you're like, well, what is this going to sound like? <laughs> it's, it's very like, I don't know how this is going to sound. Um, but we're speaking for for every single woman on this planet. So it's been four years since the debut album. So three and a half, four well, at the end of the year. Right. Give, me, give me a little leeway. <laughs> okay, okay, three and a half. <laughs> um, what, how have you changed as a person throughout that time? So much. I look back on my debut era and um, ignorance is bliss. You know, I was, I was really naive in my debut era. And, and at the time, I thought I knew everything. I was 23 when we put out the album, almost 24, but like 21, 22 recording it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, everything, my debut album was so successful and I could never have imagined what what happened for me was going to happen for my debut album. Like, it's insane to think about. Um, and then I, like, I toured for the whole of 2019 and I came off tour uh, right before the pandemic and started recording. And I was just like, okay, what is it that I want to say now? What is it that I want to sound like? Um, and then I think just over the course of the pandemic and, and being in the studio, stop and start because of the pandemic, um, but just like being able to kind of relax and realize a lot more about myself because I had the time to think um, is really what went into this album. And I think being a 23 year old woman and being a 27 year old woman, which is what I am today, um, which is still super young, but like, I just think there's a big difference in, in like maturity and uh, how you see, how you see the world and what you will and won't put up with. And I think when I hit 25, weirdly enough but when I hit 25 I feel like there was just a shift in me um and I like to think I'm a, a quite emotionally intelligent person um I'm very in tune with my emotions so I think just just putting all of that together and creating the album was was I couldn't have asked for it any other way. Girl, I didn't realize you were 23. You wrote Breakfast in Bed at 23. Girl, I can barely make an omelet. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of breakfast? I'm 27 and I can't make an <laughs> omelet, so don't feel bad. I don't cook at all. Like, the kitchen is the kitchen's not I'm for me I'm good now. All. I'm just saying, at 23, I was just coming out of the college. I was eating, like, Pat Park chicken. I was oh, like, damn, girl, no. you was making bre bre breakfast in bed? Yes. No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, so you were performing at Rihanna's Saturday. Savage Fenty show. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Do it, you have any insight on the the um the baby shower for our sis? I wish I did. <laughs> I wish I did because I want to go, but no, I don't. I, I was that was the first thing, the first performance that I did uh during the pandemic, like yeah. after obviously being off for so long. And it was all um like no audience, obviously. So it was really different. I wasn't used to um that. And it was like, you know, super strict with the testing and everyone wearing masks and social distancing. So it was like a very different experience. And that was the first thing I experienced uh like that. And it's a huge production. So just even being around that many people again after being inside for so long right. was definitely like a shock. It was, it was, it felt quite weird, but I was really excited that um, she wanted me to be a part of it. And I'm, I'm a huge um, Rihanna fan, of course, but even just like uh, all of the business ventures that she has, I think she kills it in everything that she does down to, to the Fenty lip gloss. I, I swear by it. So um, <laughs> yeah, I was really excited to be a part of it. 
Yeah, and you look great. You thank sounded you. great. Thank Everything you, thank you, great. thank you. Okay, so your next song that you just dropped is Leave You Alone. Yeah. Which is hard to do, some people. <laughs> it's like, what do you have over me? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Though? It's crazy. Like, the power that we give other people. Um, Especially, have you dated a Taurus? No. So, Scorpio women and Taurus men are like magnets sometimes really yes <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of scary to think about because I know I don't actually to be fair I don't know that many Taurus men but I know Taurus women and they they I mean you're a Taurus woman yeah but like I feel like the Taurus women I know are very like controlling and like stuff that, they're quite similar to us actually they like stuff done their way and right. Scorpios are very the same um but no, I've never dated a tourist, man. Okay, so Leave You Alone, tell me about that because that's something we all go through. Yes, Leave You Alone is literally about a situation that you know you shouldn't be in. You know better. You get a text late at night. You know you shouldn't reply to it. Right. But because we're human and we make stupid decisions and we just like to feel comforted a lot, you reply to it and you end up in a situation that you knew you shouldn't have been in. Mm -hmm. um, and it puts you right back to... You know, like when you're working really hard to like get over someone or stop a situation um, and you feel like you've gone 10 steps forward and then you get that late night text and you reply to it and you know you shouldn't and you, you take 25 steps back. And then like, you repeat the cycle all over all again. All over again. And it's just literally, it's just <laughs> right. an ongoing cycle. And um, it's not healthy in, in any shape or form. It's not healthy at all. But I think we've all been there and Leave You Alone was just a really, a really fun record. And I love, we put the talk box on it. So um, it was just, it just felt really, it's just fun. Fun. Yeah, there's only been, I think, three people I've done in person mm -hmm. so far. And you're my third one. So oh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm born on the third three. I love the number look three. At that. So look at that. Look at God. Look at God. <laughs> the album uh, Heart on My Sleeve is coming out on Friday. Uh, congratulations on everything. You were a voice mentor. Yes. Um, you know, you perform for Rihanna. Any more TV stuff that we're going to see from you? Um, Hopefully a whole bunch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think with this new album, I definitely am really excited to get back on stage. It's been a while um, and just do every and anything I possibly can because I had so much fun during my debut era and I want to just recreate all of that again so yeah and this is like a personal question um well for me do you watch Bridgerton <laughs> because as it's, much, from, it's from London you're from London like as do you much watch? as everyone probably wants me to watch Bridgerton I watched the first episode and unpopular opinion I wasn't that crazy about it the I first know. episode, I was the same way. But when you get into, into it, it, you yeah. get into See, it. See, and everyone told me that. But I'm definitely the type of person that if you don't catch me from the very beginning, I'm super uninterested, which is really bad. But I don't actually watch a lot of TV. Like, so I, I should go back and try and get into it. I should give it a bit more time. But I heard great things about it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you're like the only person I know in London. So, <laughs> so I'm like, girl, you got to watch Bridgerton. No. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. But um, it, it, I heard it was amazing. So maybe I should go back and check it yeah. out. Yeah. And then the uh, the album's coming out this Friday. Anything else you're working on? Um, just really just promoting this album. I know I've been away for a long time and Heart on My Sleeve is very, very close to, to my heart. Um, so I just can't wait to get back on tour, see my fans, explore the world and just um, just really have fun. Like I've, I've had such a fun time um, making this album and I want to recreate that on stage and, and, and live. So I'm excited. Yeah. Okay, great. And you and Muster are creating amazing music. Everything is is a okay right there? Yes, that's like my must is like my big brother. Man. Right, like I spend, uh, I spent Christmas at his house. I work out with his wife twice a week. Like, I love it's, that. We're really ten times. We're really like a family, and I couldn't ask for any like a better label situation. That's really like my as much as he's my my mentor. Um, that's my big brother, and I know I can go to him for anything, even if it's outside of music. So right. I'm really grateful for the situation that I'm in. LMA, thank you. Hard thank on you my for having me out this Friday. Go I'm get it. Say what? It's the heat, serious <laughs> exam. Like